Sai, and I work with ACE, the Alliance for Climate Education. We have educators around the country that go to high schools and we talk to students about climate change and how to do something about it. In fact, ACE has presented to over a million students in just over two years. How many people have heard something about climate change before? Just wave your arms and wave them around like you just don't care. All right. So you might get a sense that this is a serious issue. But the last thing you want is another person talking about the world's problems. I mean, what's that going to do anyway? But here's the deal. The world's leading scientists say we don't have much time to start fixing the planet's climate. And if it's going to happen, you're the generation that's going to make it happen. So I'm going to break this down for you in a way you've never heard before. Yeah, we're going to talk about the science and the consequences of climate change, but we're also going to talk about the solutions and the positive future you all can create. People are always talking about the future like it's something that's just going to happen to us. But the truth is, we have the power to shape the future we want. So let's take a look at where the world is today and what we're going to do to change it. A while back, scientists discovered that the Earth has a sort of giant thermostat that controls the temperature of the planet. And these days, that thermostat is being jacked up, way up. Why? Well, it's all about greenhouse gases and fossil fuels. But when you really get down to it, it's about you and the choices you make. In 2013, you've inherited a country that's all about living large. Not like that. Most people are living large and don't even know it. What I mean is, we each take up a ton of space, but that isn't easy to see because we each cover just a little bit of ground. Your room and your stuff cover a little bit more. Count your home and, well, yeah, you take up some space, but then there's all that space around the world that you see that you never see, like the space in Iowa it takes to grow your food, or in Brazil and China to get all the materials you need to make all your stuff, or in the Middle East to get all the fuel you need to drive around. And then there's all that space around the world it takes to dump your stuff when it turns into garbage. You see, everything you buy, use, and eventually throw away has to go somewhere. And you take up that space too. Whether you live in a mansion or a little apartment, whether your family is loaded or broke, if you're in the US right now, you're in a country that's living pretty large. Can you believe that the average American teenager uses about 21 football fields of the Earth's resources to live? I mean, you didn't choose to live this way. You were born into a world made by previous generations, so you kind of got stuck living large. Add to the fact that every day since you were like a year old, advertisers have been telling you that you could be cooler by having more, 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 making you want to live as large as you can. So whether you like it or not, you're using up 21 football fields. What's that like? Line them up end to end and run for over a mile down your football fields before you were done. Now multiply that by all the students at your school. You'd have to go from Woodbridge to Miami just to cover the ground this one school uses. There are thousands of schools in America and colleges and offices and apartment buildings. There are over 300 million of us, each with our 21 football fields. Now, there's only so much space on Earth, and we in the US aren't the only ones using it up. Some people are living almost as large as we are. It's true that in most countries, people are living a lot smaller, but in most places, the population is growing, and almost everyone is basically living as large as they can because many have been convinced that living well means living like us, supersized. If everyone around the world used 21 football fields, we'd need like five planet Earths. As it is, we're already taking up a ton of the Earth's resources, while at the same time taking away what the Earth needs to clean and regenerate itself. We're grabbing habitat from thousands of species that are on the brink of extinction, and we're even crowding in on each other's need for space. But using all these resources is creating a more immediate and a more invisible problem. What most of us don't see is that living so large is pushing that giant planetary thermostat quickly towards way too hot. Why? Because it takes a lot of energy to live so large, to move ourselves around, to heat cool our homes and buildings, and to create electricity, we burn fuel, a lot of fuel. And who knows what today's fuel of choice is? Fossil fuels! Fossil fuels, coal, oil, and natural gas. These fuels are made when living things die and decompose over millions of years. 
Now, fossil fuels have been pretty important. They've powered the industrial revolution. They've led to countless innovations, and they've improved our overall quality of life. But over the years, we've realized that there are some downsides to fossil fuels. Like they're underground, people go to great lengths to get them, blowing up mountaintops, polluting, up, polluting waterways, and even fighting to get their hands on them. And another problem is that they'll eventually run out. But the biggest problem is that when we burn fossil fuels to power our cars and trucks, uh, we're turning up that thermostat in a major way. How come? Well, now we have to understand how that planetary thermostat works. In simple terms, our Earth's thermostat can be turned up or down by changing the balance of the gases and air rocks in our atmosphere. Less than 1% of our atmosphere is made of special gases called greenhouse gases, which keep the planet warm. As the Earth gets warmed by the sun and puts off heat, these gases will trap it like that, holding heat near the surface that otherwise would have escaped into space. You gotta love those greenhouse gases, because without them, this place would be really cold. Let me hear you say, ice cold! Ice cold! When we have just the right mix of greenhouse gases, our planet's temperature stays just right for life as we know it. Just right means the ice caps stay frozen, keeping sea level from rising and preserving homes for polar bears. Just right means that ocean currents continue to flow the way they have for thousands of years. Just right means that salmon can live in their cold water homes and gorillas can live in their warm, misty forests. It means Italians can grow olives, Americans can grow corn, and Brazilians can grow coffee. It means the seasons we've come to count on come year after year, just as they have throughout human history. Just right means that climate stays stable enough for plants, animals, and people to live where they live and do what they do. It's something we've all come to count on with our lives. Make a sudden change in climate, and plants, animals, and even cultures can get driven to extinction. But climate doesn't change too quickly as long as greenhouse gases in our atmosphere don't change too quickly. Wow, that's really exciting stuff. Troy, what do you think so far? Yeah. I think the first step in addressing climate change is to realize how many resources we're using. When you learn the facts, then you can start to make a difference. The use of fossil fuels is really the key factor. Lots of people know that we put gas in our cars, but maybe they don't know how much we use to make all of our stuff. So true. Fossil fuels go into the production of so many things that it takes a great deal of imagination to picture life without it. It looks like Sai's about to get back to his presentation. Next, he's going to talk about the most important greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide.